Okay, so now myself and Ilyas are going to look at uh, a typical air tightness installation uh, of a timber frame. What we're looking at here is a, what would you expect to see in a timber frame structure, uh, be it a wall or a roof. So this is what you're looking at here is a, a 4x2 or a 100 millimeter deep stud, uh, and then we're putting our air barrier on the inside of that timber stud. Uh, within the timber frame, ideally in the, in the UK and Ireland, we always talk about fulfilling our timber frames and having your air barrier typically on the inside face of that timber frame. In this case here, we have thermojute insulation, uh, a natural uh, upcycled cocoa bean bag uh, insulation. And in the middle stud here, we have a full fill of wood fiber insulation. So from Gutex Thermoflex. Um, all the time, we're, we're, as, I, as I mentioned, we're trying to fulfill the timber frame and to eliminate any gaps and cracks and cavities within our timber frame. And then on the inside of that, we have full con uh, continuity of air tightness on the inside face of the, of the timber frame. Uh, what we're looking at here, as I said, is a typical scenario, and we'll go through a step-by-step -step approach of the typical details that we see and, and the weak points for air tightness and where air leakage can happen. Um, what we're looking at here, uh, typical cable penetrations uh, that would come in, in and out of the building, um, plumbing cables, inch pipes, um, sanitary wear and things like that. Um, also we have uh, multiple cables that penetrate the, the, the structure. This could be, again, electrical cables are very, very common, uh, penetration through your air barrier. And also here we have um, four inch ductwork. So again, very, very common in plumbing penetration that would penetrate our air barrier. And we'll have a look at how to, best ways to seal um, around that as well. And then the other common detail um, and penetration that you would have in your air tightness line would be window and door penetrations. And we'll have a look at, again, some, some ways and different methods how best to seal your window and door penetrations. And finally, the, the other penetration that we commonly have at the top of your, um, your walls, it may be a penetrating in retrofit. We would see this a lot. We, uh, collar ties or jo intermediate floor joists or um, suspended timber floors how to best seal around joist ends and where they penetrate the, fa the building fabric. And we'll have a look again at some ways of sealing around that. Myself and Ines will now roll out the membrane and just to, just when we're looking at our, our timber frame before you, you go hell for leather and you install all the membrane uh, and cut it and try to install it. Um, you just want to measure and plan out where you may have your penetrations and how, how big you need to cut your tapes and your membranes. Ideally, we want to work in manageable lengths uh, in lengths of membrane about two to three meters and lengths of tape in arm with uh, lengths of tape. So in this case here, we know that our timber frame are on the 600 center, 600 millimeters between the timber uh, studs. So we have 600, 1200, 1800, and we also want to have a little a bit of lap either side, ideally about 100 mil either side. So we know that we'll put this uh, piece of memory about two meters and then we'll have adequately uh, wide strips either side that we can seal the, the membrane back to the uh, adjacent air barrier. So the membrane is, is quite handy in that it, uh, within the markings of the membrane, we have uh, the markings at 100 millimeter centers. So 100 millimeters, 200, 300, and then we had uh, 500 millimeters, five, one, uh, one meter, one and a half, and then two meters. Um, so quite easily, uh, we've identified that we need two meters. Ilias can come ahead and mark down two meters and cut down uh, with the membrane. I did want to use as much as possible uh, the right tool. So using a, a long blade to, to uh, rip through the membrane. The membrane has reinforcements in it. So yeah, avoid using blunt knives. You'll get very, very frustrated if you're doing that. So. Um, we have marked here, again, the membrane is 1.5 by 50 meters in length. So we know, as I mentioned, we want to always give ourselves some tolerance um, at the edges and some overlap at the edges. So we know that we have 1.5, we want to allow for at least 50 millimeters uh, on the adjacent um, substrate to seal to. So we've marked up 1.45 on our timber studs where he has to put his first uh, staple to temporarily fix it. What this does then, it gives Ilias at least 15 millimeters of uh, material to seal at the, at the bottom of the wall. 
So then we can pull out the membrane and then temporarily fix it here. So we'll miss a stud and we'll hit this stud here and we'll pin it again. So as you, you want to put a, a pull on the membrane, but don't over, over, um, to make it over taut. We just want to have it nice and, nice and tight. And when you're working on your own, especially what is helpful is to apply the first staples here, miss a stud, apply the next staples here to keep, keep your line uh, straight, and then come down into the middle. What you're doing here is you're creating kind of a, a V uh, form. So especially when you're working on your own, when you have this V form to apply staples at the top, miss the middle stud and come down into the middle and apply your staples at the bottom. What this does, it just makes sure that, especially if you're working on your own, as I said, that you keep things nice and taut. And then you come back in and you can fill in the staples where you, where you first apply them. So we will then go down to the bottom of the first hand side stud and apply some staples there. And then you can infill uh, the staples in with the, between the first and the, the second stud. So what you'll notice here is, even though we've created this V form here, you'll see the membrane is bulging. So this is very common. What we'll see is when we, we are running services and pipes through the air barrier is we, these need to be taken care of. So at this instance, it's the time, best time to, to create a, a hole for your service. In this case, it's a four inch to 100 millimeter duct uh, around which Elias will make a, a, a hole and then fully press the, the air barrier back in against the, the timber frame. Um, again, here he has a multiple three cables coming through the, the air barrier. So he'll just make some nicks with the, uh, with the blade and then push the membrane back. It doesn't matter at this stage is about the, um, the holes around the cables. We'll come back and we'll seal them. So you just want to give yourself adequate play around the, the cables and the pipes to, to seal around. And in this case here, we have another pipe here. That's fine. So, yeah, you'll get a general sense that uh, that's what you're looking for, and then we'll, we can come back in and we can staple and make it more taut. But yeah, we've we've allowed for these rather than hiding um, the services and the pipes behind your air barrier, and then at a later stage, someone has to go looking for them and making bigger and unnecessary holes. Say, so in this case here, what what you'll find is when you allow for your some pipes and step um, and and cables coming through your air barrier, what you find sometimes is you may need to reposition your membrane. The beauty of it when you use it, this instance here, when you, when you locate the majority of the staples in this area here, it's going to be overlapped with, the, with the, the next membrane. So what you can do is you can be quite liberal in the amount of staples you put in this first section and it can be removed because they'll always be, will be uh, over taped at a later stage. So Ilyas is going to reposition the membrane. Just make sure that it's, it's fully taut this time. And you can see there already that you're getting a much, much tighter um, taut uh, membrane. And now we can, he can infill in between the, uh, the surfaces. So ideally when we're applying the, the membrane, we're always following the direction of the stud. So in this case, we have vertical timber studs. So we're applying the staples at roughly 100 millimeter centers between staples in the direction of the stud, again here, at one millimeter, 100 meter center. So again, like the, the markings on the top of the membrane, the membrane also has these markings at every 100 millimeters, so which donates 100 millimeters to where you can apply um, your staples. This works really well when you have fibrous insulation um, behind your, your air barrier. You may need to reduce the centers of your studs, and one such case is when you're applying, say, a uh, dense pack cellulose, a pumped in cellulose or a dense pack wood fiber like uh, Gutex thermofiber. Uh, in this case, you'd reduce your staples down to about 50 millimeter centers. There's going to be much more pressure against the membrane when you use a dense pack installation. Whereas in this case here, you can apply them at 100 millimeter centers. So, um, yeah, so now that LMS has done that, um, he can come ahead and he has one more cable to one more cable to see you. Yep, 
Now, you'll see here when you're using that fibrous insulation, you will have a general bulging of the membrane. Ideally, that's what we're looking for. Um, in that we don't want a gap between our air barrier and our insulation. Ideally, when we, when we start uh, the, the, de the design, we show a full, full of insulation between our timber frame, our studs, or our rafters, and we have a, a continuous layer of air barrier on the inside. So the two ideally should always be in full contact with each other. Um, for timber frame, ideally the staples we're using are eight millimeters deep by 10 millimeters wide. Yeah, the benefit of using those eight millimeter deep and 10 millimeter wide staples is that um, they allow for some play in the membrane rather than using uh, tacks or uh, thinner staples we, um, that are going to put more pressure on the membrane. They take some movement in the long term. Um, so um, yeah, they have to be galvanized and, and rust resistant. Um, so you'll see that just as, as we started, it's, uh, it's looking pretty taut. Now we need to come back and, uh, and fill in more, more staples on, on the stud. Yeah. So that's it, that's it pretty, pretty taut. Now we'll have a look at uh, the next section to take care of. We'll be putting on the next layer of membrane above that and we're sealing the overlap. We'll have a look at that detail. Okay, so now that we've applied the first layer of membrane, we've just went ahead and we've cut the same length of membrane, two meters again, to apply um, above this. So again, we're working from floor to ceiling. Um, so we've cut a two meter length and we'll apply, apply it at the base. So you'll see, as we mentioned before, about the markings on the membrane. This time here, we're 100 millimeters down and this gives us a good guide to work off. That we're applying the bottom of the membrane to this line here, which, which is 100 millimeters overlap between them. So as before, when Elias puts, he's been quite liberal in the amount of staples he puts in the first section here, this first overlapping section, he knows that's always going to be covered with, a, uh, with an overlapping tape. So he, uh, he can take out the staples and reposition if he needs to, because that any penetration will be covered with the, with the overlapping tape. So as before, we've missed the stud, we applied um, the membrane, again, just going off this line all the time, and then it has to come up to the top, he'll apply a staple temporary, and then he'll come into the middle and he'll, uh, he'll apply another staple, again to get that our V shape as we talked about before. Okay, so now that Elias has uh, temporarily put the membrane in place, you see, similar to the first section here where we do have some penetrations to the membrane, you see some bulging. So in this case here, we have a penetrating timber joist. This needs to be sealed around. So now Elias is going to go ahead and uh, uh, penetrate the, the air barrier here so we can fit it around the joist. And then we'll, uh, we'll look in detail how we actually seal it around the joist.
Okay, so on that way, let's just, just going to tidy up around the joist. Uh, first case, he will just put the staple and he'll, he'll uh, the staple the, the membrane to the side of the joist. So when you're working with, uh, especially around timber, timber joists like this, um, and again, Elias will go into this in more detail, you don't want to apply too much of the membrane or the tape to the side of the joist that might be exposed once all your plasterboard levels are, uh, have been installed. Okay, now that we've applied uh, the membrane around the joist, Elias is just going to tidy up around the joist and seal the, the membrane to the side of the joist using the Tescom Pro fill. So we've applied a bottom strip of tape, and you'll notice just on, right in the corners, we just want to keep away right from the corner with the, with the blade when we're cutting it. Um, some very minute leakage can happen, especially around the, around the corners. Uh, we'll have a look at that little detail now. So as you see there, it is folding the tape. It, uh, it's applied with a 12 millimeter strip as well as a 48 millimeter strip. Um, especially useful in this case, where we're sealing to two materials at, at a 90 degree angle. So he'll go ahead and he'll remove the first uh, 12 millimeter strip and he applied it right in the corner. So it's the 12 millimeter strip that will go onto the, the, the timber itself and the 48 millimeter strip back onto the membrane. It's important to use the, the press fix there. This is using a, a, a plastic spatula uh, to press the tape fully into the substrate to get it right into the corner. You'll see there he's overlapped the tape by about 50, 60 millimeters and he's just keeping the blade right just a little bit away from the from the corner, maybe two or three millimeters away from the corner. You don't want to apply the uh, the blade right into the corner, as he can have uh, some leakage areas there. So he just wants to come away, maybe two or three millimeters away from the corner, and to create a, a diagonal uh, diagonal cut. Once he's done that, he'll get the press fix again, and he'll fully embed the tape into the intello membrane, and then he can then remove uh, the final strip, the forty-eight millimeter strip. So he'll just remove the backing paper, and as he goes, he'll just uh, make sure that he pressurizes the tape against the membrane. As I mentioned before, the 12 millimeter strip is uh, ideal for windows and door sealing uh, around window and door frames, as well as around timber joists like this. Uh, worst case scenario is you apply too much of the tape to the timber, and then once you apply your plasterboard level uh, layers, that the tape will still be visible. So using the 12 millimeter strip, just make sure that it's always going to be hidden behind a plasterboard layer, generally 12, 12 and a half mil plasterboard. So then Elias applies again the 12 millimeter strip to the top of the joint. Again, keeping two or three millimeter away from the corners, overlapping from tape to tape, about 50 millimeters and then he'll use the press fix again and he'll seal from tape to tape. Once the 12 millimeter strip is fully adhered back to the substrate, he can then release the 48 millimeter strip and fully pressurize it against the membrane. You would just complete that on all four sides. Um, generally, you would start at the bottom your two sides and then enter head. Um, more, more important when you're sealing for water tightness on the outside, that you allow for uh, a constant runoff from top to bottom, but also good practice in uh, interior work. So that's all four sides complete now with the, the airtight tape, the Tescom profile around the joist end. You'll see there it's, um, once you're well set up, it's quite a quick application. Now that we have the membrane secured in place with the staples, we can then secure the overlap. So you'll see on the, the membrane, it's, it has a 30 millimeter strip identified on the edge of the membrane. Just because of the tape, the tape we're using, the Tescon Vanna, it's 60 millimeters wide. So this allows you to put at least 30 millimeters 
on both sides of the membrane, so securely fit membrane to membrane. And the tape we're using, as, as I said, is the Tesca on Vanna. It's 60 millimeter wide with a release strip, uh, one, one release strip on the back. When you're working on your own, um, it's always easy to work with manageable lengths of tape, uh, arm lengths of tape, so a meter to a meter and a half. So you cut it to length, and then to release the tape off the backing strip, it's easy if, it can be a little difficult, difficult if you're using your, your fingernails to try and release the tape, whereas if you cup it in your hand and then release the tape off the backing strip, it tends to be very, very easy. So once you have the tape released from the backing strip, you can uh, position it in place, again, working off the guideline marked on the membrane. And it's always, it's critical to use the, the press fix tool that comes with the tape. So what you're doing is you're securing the membrane in place and you're fully pressurizing the tape against the substrate. Working again in, in four to eight inches uh, in strips and work, work your way along the membrane. One of the main areas of leakage that can penetrate your air barrier can be um, electrical and plumbing ductwork and pipe work. So in this case here, we're sealing around a four inch uh, duct that's penetrating our air barrier. The EPDM grommets are very handy for pre-sealing around the end of the duct or pipe. So in this case, we're using um, a Roflex 100 suited for sealing 100 millimeter diameter pipes. So it's undersized. It's like a uh, wetsuit grommet. So it grabs a hold of the outside of the pipe and then you place it around the pipe and secure it back to the air barrier. Uh, the beauty of using the, the grommet is that it allows you to reposition and move the pipe uh, during installation. But as you see, it grabs a hold right around the, uh, the ductwork to eliminate any leakage between the actual duct and the uh, EPTM itself. Again, the grommet is supplied with the overlapping tape, the Tescon Vanna. So then you apply just half and half, half on the membrane, half on the EPDM, and fully pressurize it again using the press fix. You continue that and apply the further three strips on the three sides. Using this method of the Roflex grommets in new build is ideal where you can get to the end of the pipe to effectively seal the grommet around the pipe. But um, in retrofit scenarios where you don't have the access to get to the end of the pipe, uh, other solutions are often utilized. Where access doesn't allow for the grommet to be fit around the end of the pipe, the Exoseal Magov is a good alternative. The Exoseal Magov is an acrylic and butyl based stretchy malleable tape. It comes with two release strips at the back and allows you to fold in half and to fit around the pipe and then to mold it to suit. Ilyas will show you in this clip where we cut two strips of the Exoseal Magov, fold it in half and allow you to mold it around the, the pipe. Perfect for retrofit scenarios or hard to reach areas.
For smaller service penetrations, such as cables and pipes, the K-Flex and Rawflex grommets can be used. On the right-hand side, the Rawflex 20 is suitable for sealing pipes from around 15 to 30 millimeters in diameter. The grommet is supplied with a self-adhesive backing, so once the release strip is removed, it allows the self-adhesive to be fully pressed back to get against your air barrier. And for smaller cables, such as 6 to 12 millimeter in diameter cables, the K-Flex Mono is suitable. Where multiple penetrations puncture your air barrier in one locality, the KFX Multi can be used. The KFX Multi is suitable for sealing up to 16 cables in one locality. The hole puncher that is supplied with the KFX Multi can simply be hammered through the EPDM material and up to 16 cables in diameter between 6 to 12 millimetres can be pulled through, sealed airtight. The EPDM material can be then sealed back to your air barrier using the Tescon Vanna. For making penetrations for window and door openings, there's a couple of different methods. One method is to cut a diagonal strip from angle to angle. So find the top on corner and come down to the, the bottom left. The easiest though, a far easier method, is to find the middle of the opening, the top point, and then pierce the membrane from top to bottom. Once you've done that then, you're just cutting on the horizontal at the sill, left and right. And then also at the head, cutting from the middle out to the reveals. Once you've done that then, the mem membrane can be folded into the reveals and stapled in place. When the membrane has been folded and stapled into place, Ilias can go ahead and cut flush with the window or door frame, cut the membrane along its length. And the beauty of this method is that the waste piece that he's cutting off can now become useful at both the sill and the head. As with the two reveals, the offcut can then be stapled into place. The membrane is then cut just shy of the windowsill. You'll notice Ilias is pulling the membrane away from himself just to avoid penetrating the membrane below. It's 
always best if the air barrier can be returned around corners just to get, get away from tight corners that are more difficult to seal. You'll see here now Ilias can then go ahead and seal the overlap on the horizontal rather than in the corner. We'll work in again arm length, meter to a meter and a half strips. Ilias can put the Tescon Vana, position, position it in place and seal the horizontal joint. When sealing the bottom edge, ideally you want to overrun by about 50, 60 millimeters on the side of the window. Um, similar again, he has about 30 millimeters or so on the membrane and 30 millimeters over the window sill. Pressing the tape against the antello uh, using the press fix continuously. Then Elias can come ahead and he can fold the tape back onto the windowsill, making sure to keep away from the corner at least two or three millimeters. Cutting a diagonal strip and then folding the tape back in. To seal the outside corner, a strip of tape, the Tesco Vanna, can be cut to about 50 or 60 millimetres in length, the release strip removed, the tape folded in half and pressed in fully into the corner. Again applying 20 or 30 millimetres into the reveal and overhanging the tape about 20 or 30 millimetres. Finding the corner moving away two or three millimetres from the corner and folding the tape around the corner. This ensures the corner joint between reveal and the face of the wall is 100% airtight. Once the Tescon profile has been cut to suit, ideally around 50 to 60 millimetres, the tape can be folded. Folding the tape along its length and folding the tape along the 12 millimeter strip. By folding the tape and creating a crease at the back, this allows you to apply the tape correctly right into the corner. Once you've created the fold, the 12 millimeter strip can be cut in half. Once you've made the cut along the 12 millimeter strip, the release strip can be re removed and the one side of the 12 millimeter adhered to the other side. Once you've made the seal and created an L shape on the Tescon profile, this can then be offered up to the window. The corner piece can then be offered up to the window frame. The 12 millimeter strip can be adhered to the bottom and side of the frame using the press fix to secure the tape in place. Once the 12 millimeter adhesive strip has been secured to the frame, the second adhesive strip can be removed. Using the press fix, you can ensure a tight fit into the corner. Once the four corner pieces of Tescom profile have been fit, the infill pieces on the bottom, sides and head can then be fit. The Tescom profile is offered up to the frame with the 48 mm strip and the 12 mm strip offered directly to the frame. The 12 millimeter strip is then released and positioned.
using the press fix, you can ensure that you get a tight fit to the frame. By ensuring the 12 millimeter strip is directly in the corner, you avoid having curves or humps in the tape. The 48 mm strip, strip can then be released. Care should be taken not to apply too much tape to the frame. So then when we position our window boards and our plasterboard levels, that they're not exposed. Once the TESCOM profile has been applied to all four sides, you can ensure that you're getting zero leakage between your frame and your air barrier internally. By this method, you ensure a full airtight seal rather than using the conventional approach of expanding foams and silicones. The other area of critical air loss can be at the wall to floor junction. So in this case, we've returned the IntelliPlus down onto the slab in this case, about 50 millimeters, and it's crucial that we prepare this, the slab. The adhesive tapes and glues that we use are extremely sticky, but they do love dust. So preparing the, the surface is a must. Yes, in this case, is brushing clean the substrate. Once we brush it clean, it's also useful to use a slightly damp cloth to stabilize any rising dust. Once the surface has been clean and dry, the concrete surface can be prepared using the Tescans primer. An acrylic based primer to stabilize and prevent any rising dust. Once this primer has been applied, it dries very quickly. And then you can follow on by applying, in this case, we're using the Orcon F acrylic adhesive, applied like you would a silicon, but in this case, the Orcon F allows for future movement. So we're applying the bead of Orcon, about five to eight millimeter in depth, about an inch away from the wall, in a continuous five to eight millimeter bead. Once we apply the bead, the Intella Plus can be offered up to the bead ensuring that you don't flatten completely the adhesive. Running your fingers either side of the adhesive and pressing firmly either side of the adhesive, ensuring that you have full contact between the Intella Plus and the Orcon F adhesive. By not flattening the adhesive, this allows for long-term movement between floor and wall. This stand is a useful guide to summarize the most common penetrations that penetrate our air barrier and the typical ways of sealing them. If we start here with what we're looking at is replicating a timber joist that's penetrating our air barrier. One of the most common ways of sealing timber joists that penetrate, in this case it's the Intello Plus, is by using a split release tape, the Tescon Profil. The adhesive tape has a 12 millimeter strip and a 48 millimeter strip that allows you to apply one strip onto the timber edge and the other strip back onto the air barrier. Sealing four sides, will effectively seal the timber joist to the air tightness membrane. This is typically utilized in retrofit scenarios, timber joist ends um, and around intermediate floor level, uh, suspended timber floors, sealing them back to the air barrier, it tends to be used. The other retrofit solution tends to be around pipework and ductwork, the extra seal Magov, where you don't have the ability to apply uh, a grommet to the end of the pipe, retrofitting using a stretchy, malleable tape like the Exoseal Magov is super useful. So again, similar to the Tescon Profil, it's applied with two release strips. So you can fold the tape, apply it directly to the outside of the ductwork, and then release the, the other release strip and adhere it to the Intella Plus. The other retrofit solution is this little thing called the K-Flex Post. Again, it's applied with a Tescon number one tape, 
with the Tescon Vana backing that allows you to seal effectively around cables that are already installed. By applying the tape around the cable and fully pinching, pinching in around the cable, you can ensure that zero air leakage happens and very common areas of leakage around cables. So those three are very handy for retrofit solutions. If you can sequence in properly, especially a new build, the easiest way is to allow for the airtight EPDM grommets. In this case here, a four inch duct has been sealed using the Roflex 100. Roflex 100 is an EPDM rubberized grommet that is undersized and would fit around the outside of the duct, adhered back to the substrate and fully sealed again using Tescon Vana. Similar to the Roflex 100, we have the Roflex 50, suitable for sealing 50 millimeter pipes. Again, it's undersized and will grab a hold and air, like an airtight sleeve right around the pipe. And then you can adhere it back to the substrate with the Tescon Vana. Like the Roflex tapes, the, for smaller cables, we use the K-Flex. Again, they have the integral EPDM rubberized grommet that fully seals around the edges of the cables. And then they have their own adhesive of Tescon Vana attached so they can be fully adhered back to the substrate. The benefit of using the EPDM grommets is that you have movement in the long term. You can position and move the pipes that allows your electrician and your plumber full access to position cables during the build. The other useful grommet is, is the K-Flex Multi. Allows you to fit multiple cables in one area. So it's supplied as a 150 by 150 millimeter patch of EPDM. And then you, have, you can have a punch that's supplied with the patch. You punch in where you think the, the pipes are going to penetrate the patch, keeping the pipes at, and cables at least 10 millimeters apart. And then you can feed up to 16 cables through the patch and again seal the EPDM patch back to the air barrier. The other main area of leakage that you will see will be at this is at wall level, but you also see it a lot in the ceiling where you have penetrations coming through your ceiling and into your room is downlighters. Downlighters and attic hatches tend to be the main areas of leakage at ceiling level. In this case here, we have an uptime airtight downlighter protector that is going to seal around any downlighters that might penetrate your air barrier. So a significant amount of leakage can happen around the actual downlighter itself. So that needs to be protected. So this would sit in your ceiling void and be sealed back to your air barrier around which you can fit your insulation in your ceiling. But just means that any air leaks that you have that are very common around downlighters is fully protected. That's an overview of the most common areas of leakage that can happen through either structural penetrations or service penetrations in your air barrier.